Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim, Chapter 13, A Powder for Dragon. The strange rat was named Arthur. He was stocky, square, and muscular, with bright, hard eyes. He looked efficient. You might call him the chief engineer, said Nicodemus to Mrs. Frisbee, as indeed you might call Justin the captain of the guard, if we had any such titles, but we don't. Mr. Ages thought Arthur should come along, though he didn't say why. So we still don't know what your problem is. Isabella was gone. She had dropped her papers on the floor again when the others had entered, and Justin, to her intense confusion and visible delight, had helped her pick them up. Hi, Izzy, he said. How's the reading coming? It's fine, she said. I finished the third reader last week, and now I'm on the fourth. The fourth reader already. You're getting quite grown up. At that, she almost dropped her papers a third time and made a dash for the door. It didn't matter, Mrs. Frisbee noticed, if Justin called her Izzy, just so he called her something. Nicodemus closed the door behind her, then sat down on one of the benches facing Mrs. Frisbee. The others sat down too, Mr. Ages stretching his splinted leg in front of him. Nicodemus took the reading glass from his satchel, opened it, and through it, gravely examined Mrs. Frisbee's face. You will forgive the glass and the scrutiny, he said. When I lost my left eye, I also damaged the right one. I can see a little close up without the glass. Indeed, not very much even with it. At length, he folded the glass and put it on the table. Now, he says, what can we do to help? So Mrs. Frisbee recounted once more the events that had led her to coming here and at the end repeated what the owl had advised her to say. Move the house into the lee of the stone. She added, I don't understand what he meant by that. Jeremy the crow says it means the side where there's no wind, but what good could that do? I think I know what he meant, said Nicodemus. In a broad sense, Lee means the sheltered side. A bird flying over Mr. Mrs. Fitzgibbon's garden would notice something most of us would miss. He reached into his satchel and took out a sheet of paper and a pencil. He opened the reading glass again. As he talked, he drew a sketch. When a farmer plows a field with a big rock in it, he plows around the rock, close on each side, but leaving a triangle of unplowed land on each end. Mrs. Frisbee's house is beside the rock and will get plowed up and probably crushed, as the owl said. But if we can move it a few feet so that it lies behind the rock in the lee, then she and her children can stay as long as they need to. From the air, the way the owl sees it, the garden would look like this. He inspected the sketch through the reading glass and then placed it on the table. Mrs. Frisbee climbed up on the bench and looked at it. It was a rough map showing the garden, the big stone near the middle, and the way the furrows made by the plow would curve around it, rather like waves in a boat, around a boat. Show me where your house is buried, said Nicodemus. Miss Frisbee pointed to the spot on the sketch. I know where that cinder block is, said the rat named Arthur. In fact, I thought about bringing it in, but I decided it was too long a haul. Can you move it? Asked Nicodemus, pointing to the sketch, to this spot right here and bury it again. Yeah, said Arthur, that shouldn't be hard. Mrs. Frisbee was delighted. Looking at the map, it all became clear. She could see what a beautifully simple plan it was. When Mr. Fitzgibbon plowed, he would go right past their house. They would not have to move until Timothy was well and until the weather was truly warm. She remembered again, again what her husband had once said, how easy it is to unlock a door if you have the key. She had found the key or rather the owl had found it. Nicodemus asked Arthur, how long will it take? Depends, with a party of 10, a couple of hours, with 20, maybe an hour. We can spare 20, but it's still too long. He looked worried. 
So did Arthur. Yeah, he said. We'll have to work at night, but even so, there's just no cover. It's like wide open. We'll have to take care of Dragon, said Justin. Yes, said Mr. Ages, and with this leg, I can't do it. I'd never make it to the bowl, much less get back again. Mrs. Frisbee, looking at their baffled faces, felt her delight subsiding. Obviously, something was wrong. I don't understand, she said. I know that dragon, of course, but at night, Justin said, Dragon prowls the farmyard like a tiger, and, if, and you don't see him until he's on top of you. Then you can't move my house at all? Well, said Justin, ordinarily, he turned to Nicodemus. Should I tell her? Yes, said Nicodemus. Ordinarily, said Justin, when we have a long project to do at night, sometimes even by day, we make sure Dragon won't bother us. We put sleeping powder in his food. Mr. Ages makes it. It doesn't do the cat any harm, but he stays extremely drowsy for eight hours or so. And we station a sentry to watch him. That way we're free to work. You did it yesterday, cried Mrs. Frisbee, remembering the figures toiling the wire through the grass, remembering how strangely disinterested Dragon had seemed when he saw her. I saw the cat sleeping in the yard. Yeah, said Justin, but today Mr. Ages has a broken leg. Then he can't make the powder? It isn't that, said Mr. Ages. I have plenty of the powder. The trouble, trouble is, said Justin, it's Mr. Ages who puts it in Dragon's dinner bowl inside the farm kitchen. And with his leg broken, he can't move fast enough. But why, Mr. Ages, said Mrs. Frisbee, can't someone else do it? I'd be glad to do it myself, said Justin, but I'm too big. You see, Nicodemus explained, Mrs. Fitzgibbon feeds the cat in the morning and the evening, and his bowl is always kept in the same place next to a cabinet in one corner of the kitchen. There's a very shallow space between the floor and the bottom of the cabinet. A few years ago, we conceived the idea of putting dragon to, when we conceived the idea of putting dragon to sleep, we cut a hole in the floor just below behind the cabinet. If we put it anywhere else, they'd see it. To reach the bowl, Mr. Ages crawls under the cabinet. When he gets to the edge, he makes a quick dash to the bowl, drops in the powder and dashes out of sight. But with a broken leg, he can't dash. We might try leaving some bait outside the house, said Justin, that worked once. Once out of a dozen times, said Nicodemus, it isn't dependable and we don't have much time. We ought to move that block tonight. If we had some cat food, said Justin, thinking aloud, he might eat that, even go to the porch because you know it's his. Maybe tonight I could go in through the attic and down to the kitchen. No use, said Mr. Ages. They keep it in a metal cabinet up on the wall. You couldn't get it without a crew and that would make too much noise. Anyway, said Nicodemus, it would put off moving the block until tomorrow night. Then, said Justin, I guess what we do is stake out scouts wherever we can, try to keep Dragon out of the way, and hope for the best. Some nights he doesn't go near the garden at all. We might be lucky. Or we might not, said Arthur. I don't like it. We can't dig that block out without some noise, you know. Mrs. Frisbee interrupted quietly. There is another way, she said. If Mr. Ages can get into the kitchen, so can I. <sighs> if you will give me the powder and show me the way, I will try to put it in Dragon's Bowl. Justin said quickly, no, it's no job for a lady. You forget, said Mrs. Frisbee, I'm Timothy's mother. If you and Arthur and others in your group can take risks to save him, surely I can too. And consider this, I don't want any of you to be hurt, maybe killed by dragon, but even more, I don't want the attempt to fail. Perhaps the worst that would happen to you is you have to run off and scurry away. But for me, 
what what will happen to us? Timothy will at least probably die. So if there's no one else to put the cat to sleep, I must do it. Nicodemus considered and then spoke. She's right, of course. If she chooses to take the risk, we cannot stop her. To Mrs. Frisbee, he added, but you should know that the danger is great. It was in the same kitchen yesterday, running from Dragon's Bowl that Mr. Ages got his leg broken. And it was in doing the same thing last year that your husband died.